Mem Dalit. Boldy Moral Pitch Reish Chafalif. Mem Dal. 44th Mida. To acquire Torah. Halom and Amas Lamed. When you study, you're studying to teach. Dovazeki, the Etzim Hatoro, she lamina Achim Gavke. The Torah was given that we should disseminate it, we should teach others. Torah was not given as your private possession. He said, Torah was given to the cloud. It was not given to the individual. So because it was given to the cloud, so if you study it with the intent to disseminate it, so that's exactly, it's, it's what? It's the context that it was given. But if you're going to study it, that it should be your private possession, then that's not. Then one doesn't merit that siyat u'dishmayu. V'chein ha-mem hei, shi'lamed, shi'lumar amas lasos. Lumar amas lamed, lumar amas lasos. It's actually to actualize the Torah and the mitzvahs. Dov ze gam kin ikra Torah, shi'l al Talmud ikra raka masi. L'fichoch me'in Talmudo l'named acherim o lasos, ain't a royal al Torah. Called abstract intellectualism. Kia Torah need loodam kide she ilamid osa la cherim kol sheshem is borach nosta Torah the Moshe or Moshe limdo li Yisroel kina yochin royal la Torah the maloso. An individual, even Moshe Rabbeinu, it was given to him only to teach, to disseminate. Because because of the dimension of Torah, it has no relevance to an individual. As I was taught Bechinom, gratis, and I'm teaching you without cost. You crawl before you walk, and you walk before you run. Lishmor the Lassos. Right. Lishmor the Lassos. What's Lishmor the Lishmor is to review it. Lishmor the Lassos. Lishmor the Lassos. Lishmor the Lassos. Lishmor the Lishmor the Lassos. Lishmor the Lassos. No, 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 no. That's it. It's, it's, it's an aspect of it. Which one I ask? No, 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 if you're not going to teach it, if you're not going to study it to, to disseminate it. Where? The 45th characteristic. <coughs> but 48. Not very good, you know. This week, the, the, the mention I mentioned yesterday. Imoros amoros tahoros. So the mention says, the mention this week's parsha, that the Torah was given that because of the kedushos of the taros of Shal Yisrael, because the, the innate kedusha, the purity of Klal Yisrael, the mitzvahs were given to us to actually to advance us and to maintain us. So that's lumen am naslasos. That that is the value of the mitzvah. So if you study it without actually performing the mitzvah, the effect, the value, is not, is not, is not being there. Hamem vov hamachim esrabo. One wisens his rebbe. What is wisening? Here's hamachadid esrabo. You sharpen the rebbe. Dovizek hamushamar l'malagamke in kikach u'i in ha-Torah. She'itzakoton... Yadlik is a right? Or in Titus. 
Eitz Chaim Hila Mazikim Bo. Why is Torah compared to Eitz? So it says an Eitz, we you can have one a small twig can ignite a large large log. So the same thing, the Talmud could actually benefit the Rebbe, could advance the Rebbe. This is me Talmud Yosef so Mikulam. Moshe is buyer. So that that's a native Torah. That's the Eitz Chaim. That's the Eitz Chaim. But seems it seems to be redundant. He said Shol the Meishiv. We discussed so yesterday Rish Lokish for Rabbi Yochanan. So that's that's Mechadi. It seems to be Mechadi. Machin was Rabbi was not Shol the Meishiv. Pirushu Shol Mashi Yeshlo Rishu Min Asvekos Veinu Dabri Min Achidu Tafilu. There he's asking. Just it should be you know. To remove yourself from a questionable situation. Here it's specifically, it's chidut. So, what does it mean? What the, the intent of the Talmud is to ask the question to sharpen the Rebbe? What is he? He's testing to stump the Rebbe. Is that, is that what we're talking about over here? Well, how's I mean, If I want to know, I ask the question because the question's bothering me. So, if the student has a good mind, right? So, so, so the Rebbe will gain from having that special student. But it's not the students coming up with a question to sharpen the Rebbe's mind. To a degree, it's, it's almost like a disrespect when you're trying to, to ensnare the teacher, the Rebbe. It's related to, uh, if you're part of the process of asking and learning, you... No, no, you said before it's a show of omission. You ask and you respond. So what is that? He, and this is saying, he says, this is different. There you have a question, you post a question, you're ready. No, there's none of it. Then you retain it. You receive it. You have seven years of your We're talking about a relationship with your Rebbe. We're talking about a relationship with your Rebbe. You said a relationship. You ask your Rebbe and you respond to your Rebbe. Then it says here, it's Mechadi, this Rabbi. So what's the, he's asking, what's the difference between the two of them? But you ignite the Rebbe. No, you sharpen it. You sharpen it. You answer the question that you Meshav could be even to the Rebbe. Yeah, you could even both, Rebbe. both, both. With any question that's posed, you're going to respond, to, you're going to try to figure out the question. He says, he said, because if a question bothers you, that's an indication you value the subject matter. Right. Otherwise, you just, you know, you just, it's, it's irrelevant. You didn't get a bracha to the hand. Yeah, but we're How do you sharpen the Rebbe? Engaging in the... Uh, so, so it's one and the same. It's in the gates. It's, it, they're both they're both happening simultaneously. Yet he's pointing out over here. No, it's not the same as before. Before it's speaking that a, Reb, a Talmud needs something to be uh, elucidated, to be clarified. Now we're talking about no. The Talmud has nothing. To, nothing has to be clarified. He's just entering into to I, I think maybe it means to because he wants to understand it better. He has no questions. You know, the Talmud has has to say. You know, maybe he can understand it differently. You know, Rebbe has a, presents his position. Now the student responds. He says, but why can't you understand it differently? It's, it's not to clarify a question. He's asking, why can't it be understood? Why does it be understood the way you're saying it? Well, maybe it could be understood differently. No, but it's chidu. I understand this thing. No, but even same in the same in the same in the same level. Same level. Mm -hmm. I remember, I once uh, shared something with my Shem Zechariah He didn't spend a lot of time in Moral. It wasn't his, you know, his, his type of background. So I once told him something profound from the Moral concern many years ago. So he says to me, he says, no, I regret it. Of course, he learned my relevant, meaning it wasn't his 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 study, it wasn't his forte. Of course, it was the morale was so profound. It was Raputin. Raputin was a hundred brother. That was his thing. Morale. He was, he was the expert of morale. Raputin. Raputin was his young chavrosa. I wish he was young chavrosa. Slavotka back in Europe. Hamemzad hamevenish also.
he understands the subject matter when he hears the what does that mean? What does it mean? He understands. Either understand or you don't understand. You know, sometimes somebody makes a presentation. Says, the Rebbe says to the Do you understand it? We understand it. Even though they fully don't understand it. So if a person doesn't say he understands, he fully understands. That means it, it's similar to what we said earlier. If you have a question, you're not going to leave a stone unturned until you resolve, until you have an answer to that question. Same understanding, same idea. It's not a question, it's fully grasping the material. To be continued. <laughs> States this thing. It's not complicated. You have to understand what he's saying. But he's very clear what he says. The question is, what is he saying? Very concise and very specific. Right? The Rambam. Some people present things in a very complicated yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, no. Years ago, there was a few years ago, this Magidi like Shur in the world. He was a son of Rav Hanshul Levitz from the world. His name was Rav Nochum. They had one of the best Magidi Shur in the world. In, in the mirror. He was one of the, he was from the mirror in Europe. So, um, and when he would explain things, it was, would be a level of, of clarity that was one of a kind. So he would say to the students, he says, you know, somebody comes up with a, an understanding of the Gemara. And it's very difficult to understand. He says, look, you realize the Amoroim and the Tanoim had very good minds. And when they presented something, it wasn't that complicated, right? So to say something which is um, like you're forcing it, you know, something you say something, well, we have nothing better to say. Do you think that's what they're saying? Evidently, they said something which is cogent and compelling and obvious, that, that there's no other way to understand it. So to come up with something which is half-baked, they're definitely not saying something which is half-baked. That's what he used to say. Chaim used to say, Chaim Briska used to say that if a person on this, you know, somebody once said to Chaim, you know, he said something to Chaim Briska, and he didn't explain himself well. So he says to Chaim, he says, I know what I mean, but I can't explain it. He says, no. If you really have, cl in your mind, you know what you're saying, you're able to explain it. And if you can't explain it, that means in your mind you don't have clarity on it goes hand in hand. 